We open on an interesting take on Lister being the last human alive. I just can't believe it's all over. We were so happy back then, Cry. I had a species, I thought the two of us would be together forever. One day I'm sure you'll meet another species that'll make you just as happy. This is just silly. You never liked the human race, did you? Quite honestly, sir, I never thought they were good enough for you. Nothing compared. <laughs> oh god, he's on the Sinead O'Connor phase of grief. I knew they'd break his heart. Here one minute, gone the next. Fly by night, liberty gibbets. Later on, he commiserates with one of the vending machines. You don't seem your usual self today. How do you know what my usual self is like? I watch you through the crack in your door. The things you do when you're alone are so funny. Okay, well, maybe that was a mistake. I'll be here. <laughs> Meanwhile, apparently someone has been writing letters to the JMC computer saying nice things about Rimmer and how he should be promoted. They have absolutely no option but to request you stop writing them. Oh well, that figures. Oh, bollocking damn and jumbo buggers. So many good Rimmerisms in season 10. So this has backfired because now Rimmer is in trouble. They've looked into your actual service record and have realized that you haven't reported for duty in over three million years. But I've been dead for most of that. Yeah, that's not really fair, is it? And you're therefore being charged with gross dereliction of duty, and you have 24 hours to present your rebuttal. If he's found guilty, he'll be demoted to the same rank as Lister. There'll be no one but you to obey my orders. Help me, that's an order. Please, sir, don't order me to help you. You know how much I hate helping you. Right, Dan? Poor Crichton. Later on, Rimmer gets on Lister about being, well, mopey. In your mopey clothes, listening to your mopey music, being all mopey. It's time you manned up. Listen to some brass band music. If there's anyone who should be an expert on what to do when you're in a funk, it's Rimmer. I've noticed it. And I've written it down in a special report. Here come the special reports again. And let me tell you, Melado. <laughs> I pull no punches. You are the star of your own mopathon. Apparently, Lister has been dunking his cookies in the fish tank because he's too lazy to get a drink. As long as it's wet and melty, you don't care where you stick it. Here's another weird conversation. Rimmer tells Lister that he should be ready in case they ever come across a woman as if it could happen at any minute. What, you think your old moves would still work today? You think that snaky, sneaky arm round the shoulder trick in a dark cinema is still cool? Women have moved on from that move. Moves don't move on. Moves move on. What moves move? Do you have any salsa? We need more salsa. Where's the salsa? No salsa. I was at Super Medu yesterday. It was uh, pretty delicious, actually. Ah, bon. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I like how the hot drinks vending machine has a smoky voice and a French accent, while the candy and cold drinks dispenser sounds more like an airhead. Anyway, Lister gets maybe a little too friendly with this vending machine. Are you eating on me? Why are you eating on a dispensing machine? Who does that? I'm not. I mean, is everything okay, sir? It's okay. I'm sure Crichton can settle this. He put his hand on my logo. <laughs> that reaction. Unbelievable. This is going to go in the report. Later, Rimmer is still trying to figure out how to make up for the lost work time during the three million years he was dead. Crichton suggests bribing. Not a bribe, sir. A donation. Expenditure cut, sir, from the supplies budget. There's an astonishing amount of toilet paper in the 2,143 restrooms going to waste. Toilet paper that never goes into action, never sees the field of battle. That's a weirdly poetic way to describe unused toilet paper. So yeah, Crichton is going to remove the toilet paper from most of the bathrooms because there are only two crew members who use them. Anyway, Cat has some bad news. Okay, here comes the bad news. But I'm gonna do it as charades. He means charades, sir. I love that Crichton explained that. If nothing else, the cat video for this season is gonna be fun. Death word. The shouldn't happen to Kachansky. Now the Kachansky quota has been reached for this episode. A giant death word. Giant death word heading straight for us. Rimmer's obsession is a giant death worm for some reason. Sound it! A giant death worm! A giant death worm has come out of it! Like, this has nothing to do with a giant death worm! Where are you getting the giant death worm from? Your clothes are on a, on a washing line, jacket. and a mail pipe came in and crashed into your clothes! Yeah. Got it in one! That was amazing. So now they've got a ton of mail to go through, so Rimmer and Lister have a little bet to see which of them will get a personal letter addressed to them. Oh yes, I've got one! Mr. Popular with a capital P, there's no stopping him! Here he goes! Who's it from? It's a parking fine. Oh, but Lister might have him beat. This boy does not know the meaning of the words of fate. Go on then, who's it from? Haley Summers. 
It turns out to be a letter from an old girlfriend from when Lister was a musician. What I lack technically, I made up for in loudness. Yeah, we know. Oh. Look, I, I don't want to read this. It'll make me miss home more than ever. I'll read it. How nice of Rimmer. Dear Dave, I hope you don't mind me writing to you, but I've got a confession. I don't know whether to laugh or laugh. I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm pregnant. Hang on, my head's on spin cycle Are you saying that I'm three million years into deep space and she's pregnant with my baby? Anyway, it turns out that the father could be Lister or some guy named Roy. Oh, not Roy. Who's the dad, me or him? She doesn't know she's going for a DNA test. She must have written another letter to tell me the result. Later on, Lister goes to talk to the candy dispenser again. I heard what happened with dispensing machine 23. She's such a trashy looking machine. Is that what you like, Dave? Trashy. Nothing like a jealous vending machine. I'll go somewhere else then. You're not the only dispenser on board. Why don't you do that? Or the guy that tries to get back at the jealous vending machine. And you know when I said that your Mexican red hot chili crisps were really spicy? Well, I was lying. I can't believe you said that. There goes all the toilet paper. And what did we get? A thank you. It turns out that the computer just wanted to trick them into making donations. It repeated that the only way it could give you an absence from duty note was if you were unwell or you'd taken a sabbatical to care for an unwell member of the crew. So this is where two of these subplots start to come together. Rimmer's idea is that Lister has PTSD for missing the human race, and he thinks he can use that. But Lister hasn't been acting badly enough to warrant that. But there's still time. One act of saliva-dripping, mouth-foaming insanity by midnight tonight. Shouldn't be too hard. Meanwhile, Lister is looking for that second letter, and we get one of those scenes where Cat tries to be helpful. Don't think about them together. Just move on. Most of which I'm obviously going to talk about in a later video, but Lister remembering all these obvious signs that his old girlfriend was cheating on him. Yeah, she was always doing late night shifts, supervising the delivery of the unstealable pens, or staying behind to help update the bank queue waiting poll rope. And somehow believing them at the time is pretty funny. Hey, you don't think she was with this Roy guy the whole damn time? Afterwards, Lister runs into Crichton, who gives him some actually not bad advice. You've got new friends now. True, they may not be human, and some of them are annoying and stupid and petty and maybe even insane. Even if it could have been worded better. You've got to forget about the past and look after the present. So it's back to the candy dispenser. This is awkward. Look, I'm sorry about before. He wants to make it up to her, and she does have a request. If I could have anything, absolutely anything, I've always wanted to see around the corner. I know it's crazy. But it's always been a wild dream of mine. How did this vending machine turn out to be such a great character? It's everything I thought it was and more. Anyway, she asks to stay in the hall and Lister goes to move her against the wall when... <laughs> Awkward. I knew you'd come around, you naughty boy. <laughs> Maybe it'd be easier to pick it up if you got off of it first, Lister. Wow! I have never seen a ceiling. Rimmer sees this out of context, though I guess it's in context for the vending machine. And now all three of these subplots have come together. Sabbatical note, here we come. <laughs> I'm just trying to pick her up. Looks like you're well past that stage to me, sir. Oh, Crichton. Meanwhile, there's no toilet paper, but Cat finds a pile of letters on the floor that apparently Crichton dropped at some point. One of them turns out to be Lister's letter. You see what you guys have done to us? This is madness! And so much for Rimmer's reports. It won't be special in a minute! So Lister finally has his letter. There might be hundreds of generations spawned by me. But naturally, he has a lot to think about before reading it. She was a wonderful woman. And I'm sure she'd have been an even more wonderful mother. Yeah, it turns out the kid wasn't his after all. What an absolute slag. And so ends Dear Dave. So this was probably the most sitcom-y episode of season 10, so it was a little hard to talk about since there wasn't any action or exploration to speak of. It was mostly jokes. Not a complaint, by the way. Again, season 10 is hilarious. Just explaining why this video might end up being a bit short. What's kind of funny is that I tend to compare the humor in season 10 to that of Seinfeld, but this episode even has a similar storytelling device. Seinfeld tended to have something like two to three subplots that would come together and show that they were similar or fit together in a way you might not expect. And this episode does that. 
Rimmer needing to come up with an excuse for his absence and Lister's letter from his girlfriend seem totally unrelated to each other, but the part with Lister talking to the vending machines more because he misses the human race and needs company kind of acts as a bridge between them and it all comes together at the end. I thought that was pretty clever. I also love the vending machines in this one. Comic old talking vending machines have been a thing since season one, but I love how they're actual characters now, one of which was really quirky. Also, once again, season 10 takes an idea brought up earlier in the series and does a comedic take on it. Lister being the last human alive was played for drama in the first couple seasons, and then again in seasons seven and nine, and then this episode comes along and treats it like a breakup. Also, the idea of Lister having a child with an ex-girlfriend is an interesting one, which could have maybe been played for more drama than it was, but then again, the episode seems to forget that he did have kids between seasons two and three, and it's kind of weird that that never comes up. And again, technically, Lister isn't the last human alive because the Red Dwarf crew survived at the end of season eight. Oh well, it's still good as a standalone episode. Next up is a season 10 finale, The Beginning. See you then. Remember that documentary we watched about breasts? You thought Ariolas was a Spanish goalkeeper. But what was he, Italian? 